Welcome back to another episode of Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. Um, we just took out Vort last episode, and now we're going to read um, the descriptions of everything that Grey Rat has. Oh, hello, you're back, and in one piece. Okay. So he has Embers, Blood Red Moss Clump, clump which uh, does bleeding build up. Red moss clump used as maggot repellent. So in this game, bleeding is kind of done with maggots. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at that once we get to a certain area. Bleeding builds up when attacked by sharp blades or spikes, and once triggered, cause severe damage. Use this moss clump before it reaches that point. It's interesting because like with this, you, there's actually a physical thing you can see that causes bleeding like over a period of time, and when it builds up, it triggers which makes more sense than like what you see with poison and stuff. So um, that reminds me, I should buy an item. All right, and so we have rope fire bombs, which are biscarn attached to a string and filled with black powder thrown behind and explodes. No different than a fire bomb. It's just a PVP item, really. I mean, it's just another variation you can do to trick people, I guess. Bandit knife, a wide, single-edged short sword, primarily a slicing weapon, but its blade is crafted to cause bleeding, making a favorite of lowly thieves. And that's a quick step. Long sword, which we had, and bastard sword, a widely used heavy great sword, normally wielded with two hands. Broad horizontal sweeping attacks make this sword effective against multiple enemies, but unwieldy in narrow spaces. Stomp. Uses, use one's weight to lunge forward with a low stance and increased poise, and follow with a strong attack for an upward slash. Um, DD, more strength. Yeah, I'm going quality, so I'll probably... I mean, it technically is the same, but... Anyway. Mace. Iron hammer designed for use in battle, a common weapon of clerics. Which is interesting, because Vort had a mace. Might he be a cleric? Or have been a cleric. This bladeless strike weapon is effective against most foes. Perseverance. Assume an unfaltering stance of prayer to temporarily boost poise. Damage reduced while activated. Spear. Common spear. Short spear that allows attacking with shield up. Spear attacks are centered on thrusting but can inflict high damage when timed to the end of an enemy swing. And the skill is shield splitter. Take a large step forward and make a single focus thrust to puncture enemy shields. Crossbow, skill is tackle, he can shoulder tackle someone, that's cool. We got a buckler, large center perfusion designed for parrying, repel an attack at the right time to follow up with a critical hit, works while equipped in either hand, hmm, I wonder if in this game, like Dark Souls 2, they kind of made it better for certain things, and I wonder if I should get the Puckler for that reason. Elkhorn Round Shield. Standard round wooden shield. The blue antlers are reminiscent of designs found in Mira. We talked a lot about that in Dark Souls 2 because antlers also have a imagery in Bloodborne, so I was, I was particularly interested. But uh, Creighton had antlers on his thing, and I, th I think uh, Kale did as well. Wooden shields are light, magical, blah, blah, and you can parry. Round shield. Kite shield. North or orthodox metal shield. Looks like drang like shield to me. Standard helm. From Dark Souls 1. And thief mask. Mask worn by those with something to hide. Used to conceal the face, muffle the voice, and go by cover of darkness. Yep, and then we have standard and fire arrows. This is a great resource to get fire arrows here. Goodbye. Oh, this place. Is yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think we've done everything here, uh, but I am gonna buy um, this for sure, and um, if I need that, I guess I'll buy it at the time. Ashen. And then, Very well. then take I'll see what I can do. I think I could probably level up once here. Oh, I need three souls. 
I mean, I do like that you can essentially do this and sell things quick. Very well. Then uh, probably just I'll go up to twenty, I think, for with, with my uh, with my health, and then kind of focus on other stats. So, all right, let's go to the foot of the high wall. And let's explore the undead settlement. So yeah, um, can we zoom in with this? Okay, good. All right, so we see a lot of crows here. Similar to uh, on the Huntsman's Cops, at least one image of the Huntsman's Cops. Um, and also we have a giant, like just a giant, like giant from Dark Souls, one giant sitting on the top of this tower, firing what looked like, like almost like Dragon Slayer level um, arrows. You can see carts like people are being rounded up. And we'll see more as we get closer. So yeah, you can see this one's kind of smaller. So it's just a regular soul of a deserted corpse. So, I mean, the question kind of exists, like, were these... Were hollows being rounded up for, uh, like, for the undead curse, like, in the past? brought here? Are they being taken away from here? Are they... There's certainly a lot of... Uh, these carts. Alluring skulls, of course. A skull resplendent in the scent of souls, prepared by evangelists of the Cathedral of the Deep. Throw to shatter, spreading souls which attract enemies. Prepared by evangelists of the Cathedral of the Deep. Hmm. Well, we know that there's Aldrich of the Deep. We haven't heard of the Cathedral of the Deep. But yeah, here are all these uh, pilgrims sitting here. I mean, again, we saw these in the first opening cinematic. Walking towards something, walking to Lothric. Trying to get up there. And incidentally, <laughs> we can see one. Grant me death. Moving. Undo my shackles. <laughs> Which is really interesting, because it begs the question, like, what happened to these guys? Are these guys dead? Are these guys in stone? Who is this guy? Oh. Oh, then it's true. The champion of Ash, as I live and breathe. To be in your presence is a great honor. I am Yol of Londor, a pilgrim, as you can see, only somehow I failed to die as was ordained. Well, perhaps my calling lies elsewhere. Say, champion of Ash, how does the idea of taking me into your service strike you? I was once a sorcerer. Surely I can be of use. 
I don't think he's ever stood up. I feel like that's got to be a patch or something. So first of all, he calls us Champion of Ash. Like, it's a very specific title. I like Champion of Ash better than Chosen Ash or whatever. Or Chosen Undead. Two, he says he's from a place called Londor, which we have not heard about yet. Three, he says that he's a pilgrim, which, you know, as I, I think I let the cat out of the bag with that. And four, he says he did not die as was preordained. Five, he also says he's a sorcerer. Did he give it did he give us his name? <laughs> it's Yol from Londor. Which we'll hear a lot more about. And I'm gonna be very fascinated with Londor. Um you know, as things go uh in this playthrough. Because if you've seen my other two playthroughs, if if you haven't, check them out. You'll know that my interest lies in a very different location than I think what classically is said to be standard Dark Souls playthrough. Or how do you say that? <laughs> I think what most people would assume the main goal is, I do not assume that's the main goal. And Londor is where we find the alternative goals in this game. Oh, I am honored, truly. I should be dead, yet you have granted me purpose anew. I, Yol of Londor, do solemnly swear myself to you. And with that, he disappears off to Firelink Shrine for us to call upon him another time. I can already tell this is going to be a two episode area. <laughs> So yeah, um, here are the kind of like, the guys that guard the undead settlement. Maybe they round up these hollows? Yeah, the one thing is that you roll into them and they stagger no matter what they're doing. <laughs> like, they're kind of a pushover. Oops, <laughs> I didn't roll into them. Uh, but they have this like, witch doctor thing around their neck. They kind of look like witches, and they have lantern-like watchers. Hmm. But we're going to find them all around. Again, I don't know if this is also a reference to Bloodborne. Well, not a reference, but a like a, you know, a, a, a nod, upside down hanging corpses. That looks like a red summon sign to me. Okay. Oh yeah, we respawned everyone. Can I pair these guys? Guess we gotta kill one. No problems. A lot of interesting. Now you can see there's another thing going on here. We'll look at those closer later. I guess I didn't realize it would completely break apart, but uh. Looks like people are turning into trees here, too, in a way. Oh, and we have these gruesome things. I mean, come on, can you imagine, like... Being trapped in a cage that small with, uh... Do I not have a thrust? I'm gonna need a thrust. Is this a thrust? No, that's totally not a thrust. Is this a thrust? Nope. That might be a thrust. 
we'll go with that. Um, small other covered round shield. It features a large center protrusion designed for carrying attacks. Oops, I didn't realize that was. So yeah, we can see these things which look much more like um, Grey Rat, which I think are the thieves spoken about, but I don't know. It might be a combination of different things. So yeah, you can see this guy in a chair, he's turned into a charcoal pine. Small bundle of charcoal pine resin quickly applies fire. Does not last for long. So yeah, there's the pine bundle, or there's yeah pine bundles and pine resins. Uh, the pine bundle is very quick, but lasts like to apply, but lasts a very short time. The uh, the resins like can I parry him? Um, anyway, this is the two different ways of doing fire uh, or whatever. Four pronged pl oh nice something of course we usually get in the DLC of this four prong of oh, Dark Souls one this four pronged plow is shaped like a fist yeah it kind of looks like a hand with four longer fingers and is a worker's tool in the undead sentiment not originally intended for battle but serves as a deadly weapon owing to its sharp points and you can charge with it hold spirit waste and charge at foe. We need to get this, which we'll send down. Ugh. Bunch of books here. Change this as well. Well, I don't know. Used to be able to hear the flies that went around here. I distinctly remember it. But anyway, more bodies in the corner. Torturing devices similar to the ones found in Aldia's keep. Torturing people, undead in so many ways. Loretta's bone. So Loretta was the person that we were meant to give the blue tear stone ring to. Can we use this? No. Old discolored human bone with several holes bored into it. A woman's corpse in the undead settlement was found clutching this bone. Her name was Loretta. So key distinction. I don't know why, but this is not a bone from Loretta's body. It's a bone that Loretta held. Which will make at least one bit of dialogue make more sense. I'm gonna try to at least take this a little bit slowly so that we don't completely overwhelm ourselves. All of the ones with all the barrels with the cloth on top are exploding, by the way. Uh, I mean, to like fire bombs and stuff. This evangelist, we've gotten her attention. She has this interesting magic and a large mace, but this magic is called Gnaw. 
She also has a book, which she pre preaches from. Cleanse the bastard's curse. Poor child, come to me. So anyway, that's what an evangelist looks like. Uh, and they're the ones that make the uh, the skulls. The uh, alluring skulls. Interesting. So we know that she's from the Cathedral. I mean, I'm, I'm filling in a gap. I'm telling you that that's an evangelist. But we know that the evangelists are from the Cathedral of the Deep. So she has come from the Cathedral of the Deep uh, to this town, potentially to uh, round people up for some reason. Did I even use that? Like I hit me enough. That, oh, I guess my I'm not doing that much healing yet. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to go do something first. Um, before I kind of like do the level. Mm. And the, uh... the slowness of some of this stuff is real, real nice. from getting back up, okay. Uh, and that's for later. Um, there's actually, I'm gonna do kind of a weird thing at this point. And there's a little bit of a clue that you should do it, at least what people have guessed, and no one in their right mind would have considered this a clue. Um, but, yeah, can I get up if I go down here. I don't want to try, but that's where you get the clue. Homeward bone. Alright, so... There's this enemy here. There's an enemy in this level, but... Um, <laughs> that bird just disappeared. Can we grab this? We should just be able to grab it. Ooh, we, I could have grabbed it probably if I was quick. I saw the thing pop up. But yeah, this enemy is usually um, hostile, but he's not. And in fact, he has a thing that says examine on the back of him, uh, which we're going to do. So 
a lot of weird stuff in a lot of Dark Souls, especially like what your character does, but... That's pretty weird. And why would he waste a perfectly good cage? I mean, like, what a waste of materials. But anyway, you can see a lot of the bodies and people being rounded up. Incidentally, I don't think these are rounded up for the same reason as the evangelists. I think, you know, we happen to know those are different now. But yeah, it looks like we're in some sort of cave here. Just kind of like stalagmites on the on the bottom here. It sounds like we're in a ship or something, like creaking wood. And there's this boy here. There's this sacrificial altar here, and then there's this war god wooden shield. Should definitely have to read. Like, where are we? What are we doing? I like how it shows you what the, like what the, uh, like the skill parry, you can see the icon, that's probably a parry icon, and then this weapon skill, it shows a weapon. They don't do that with weapons, just shields, okay. Wooden shield reinforced with metal, the largest of the wooden medium shields. This looks like the lion wooden shield in Dark Souls 2. The bizarre pattern figured on the shield is the mark of a mad god, revered as a god of war in remote regions. Well, we know the God of War was, um, well, the two main ones we know of are the um, Faram and the Firstborn, Firstborn of Gwyn, which who may or may not be the same person. Who is this fool? Well, what's up? This pit is for hollows, not for the likes of you sane folk. Or perhaps you are a hollow, posing as otherwise? Well, I assume that, you know, since he said this is for hollows, I'm going to say I am and I'm just posing because I want to, you know, be in his good graces. Look at his uh, sword. It's really interesting. And has a unique look. It reminds me of something. I can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe just something else from this game. <laughs> yes, yes. Then we are just fine. It's important to know who you are, but we'll all be mad soon enough. And should you be undead, well, all the more so. Beware, the shackles of the gods are fragile. Mm. You might need this. Etch it on your heart if you feel your sanity slipping. Mound makers. Come here to pile up your victims. For that will form your anchor. You'll see when you go mad. They'll be your family. <laughs> this is a great covenant, by the way. You'll go mad one day, but not today. Take my advice. Use this bone and leave this place. This pit is for hollows and for the occasional madman fond of piling up victims. You better things to do, I'd hope. <laughs> this pit is for hobby. <laughs> um, okay. Pledge oneself to the Mound Maker's Covenant. A malformed vertebra found by the mad with a queer symbol on its inside, proof of the shackles of the gods. That's really interesting. So, a vertebra of one of the mad mound makers that has a symbol that is proof that the gods watch over the mound makers. 
Equipped to pledge oneself to the Mound Makers. The Mound Makers wish only to add to their mounds, becoming mad spirits, whether summoned as cooperators or invaders. They are blithe to those around them, for in their minds, any kill might lead to another shackle. So yeah, it, it really builds on the, some of the covenants in 2, where basically I can be some if I was this covenant, I can be summoned. Like if I'm invading, or if I'm summoned as an invader, I can't like fight the boss, I can't do anything. I can only fight phantoms and the host. But the mound makers make it so you can be like a white soapstein and a red soapstein soap sign. And they're like a they're like a blue or pink or something in between kind of thing. So it's a really nice like way to uh make it you know, it's a risk when you summon a mad person and a lot of people summon without even looking, so that is to their advantage. I wish I could kill this guy because uh, he actually won't live for the whole game and I want to see how he fights but um, let's just keep it as is. Um, Alright, as I say, I know this is gonna be a two episode thing because I'm I haven't even gotten to the end of settlement and so uh, yeah I think it I think Homer Bones act like uh, like resting now, which is good. Now I can hear the flat flies. Maybe that sound is just not there before. Oh, come on. I suppose I should go this way. Just because I think there's a door to open. Oh, come now. That's untenable. That's what you get for that. Same sword. Which kind of looks like a flamberge, I suppose. Okay, so I only wanted to open that so that when I come back. <laughs> Caduceus round shield. Standard round wooden shield, it's decorated with the twin snakes, an ancient symbol of the Great Swamp. Yeah, and that was the uh, Pyromancer's uh, shield. Um, I'm going to go, again, this is going to be a long episode. I'm going to go read that hint, or play the hint of how to get to the Mountain Maker's Covenant. There's nothing here. Um, and hope I can get back up. Otherwise, then I'll just continue with the rest of the, uh, the area. I was blocking. Okay. I guess it's just around here, so I should have not been so. Makeshift shield cobbled together from wooden planks provides minimal protection at the cost of moderate humiliation. But you can shield bash with it. Without lowering your guard, strike the enemy with the shield and knock them back or stagger them. So anyway, I think this is meant to be your clue. You can talk to this guy, um, but he tells you that you can walk into that cage, I guess. Never known I disappeared. So grand and carry the cage. 
he ever had his cage. And Nana's never coming back. So come into the cage and become Nana's shade. Another Nana disappears. I mean, yeah, I don't really know what it's meant to do. first time okay so shade yeah shade is also kind of used to refer to someone that um, you know invades or they call that a shade I don't know if that's a thing from other games or not but that's certainly what they call them here okay come on Ooh, that was quick. Some guys here I want to grab before an ambush. They have a war pick. Oh, come on. <laughs> At least I was able to effectively block that one. Um, and that's actually kind of a shortcut, but I want some items around here, so... Any Titanite shards are great. We got everything up there, so I think we're good to just continue along. No hidden path ahead. That's the first message of that, of, of that kind. Alright, so there's an area down here. You can see now these are becoming enemies. Uh, I don't need to fight them though. But I'm gonna run down into this area. And then on, on a torturing table, I'm gonna get a warrior of sunlight for some reason. Can he fall down here? And then we have Drink Estes Soup, which is cool. It's just like little, sometimes they'll have these soups around and they can refill your life without using an Estes. And we'll find out later that someone's making those soups. Oops. Um, okay, so an ancient talisman depicting a holy symbol bestowed upon the warriors of sunlight. Equipped to pledge oneself to the warrior of sunlight covenant, warriors of sunlight are brilliantly beaming cooperators who cooperators who place their gold signatures to help those in need, for it is their duty to deliver a great conquest to their summoner. It's interesting because that holy symbol was drawn by um, Solaire himself. Although he drew it himself, it doesn't have to be the one that he came up with. Oh, come on. Okay, so these die a lot more. Okay, I was afraid to attack that guy because I was like, that other one took forever. This guy's got a bunch of shuttles. He's got red eyes, indicating that he's a hard enemy. Traveler. Evangelist up there. 
sending her magic called Gnaw, which we'll learn more about later. Oh gosh. We get the whip. A leather whip that is never intended for use in combat. With a little use against armor and dust skills. Yep. Impact is the skill. Strike from the left to evade shields and deal a stinging blow that temporarily slows stamina and recovery. Ooh, interesting. It's a cool one. That could lend to some fun PvP. There's a Titanite or Crystal Lizard up here. Not sure actually how you get it anymore. Maybe you have to get it um, from the other bonfire. I'm not sure. Oops. Yeah, there you go. And that causes bleed. Titanite shards. Okay. Um, so we do get invaded here. Okay, yeah, I guess you just do that. <laughs> I didn't see what we got. I think it was a gem. Okay. Um, I suppose let's light this in case we die. <sighs> and he's that kind of weird color. Okay, don't get attacked by both. Wow, that guy's coming way far up. Oh, he is coming. That's not fun. I will find it very difficult to fight both of these guys. Okay. Oh, and he's using that sword as well. Okay. Oh my. <laughs> okay, so I can't parry you. And he just powered through it. Here we go. Nice. just on the same page here. Yeah, kill yourself. 
Oh, but he put it. Oh. <laughs> How creative. He put a, um, he put a warmth as well as the, whatever, the inner power or whatever. I can't remember the name of that. So wait, we, so he doesn't, he doesn't invade a second time? I am such a noob at this game. Oh, he probably invades if I'm only embered. Yeah. Holy Knight Hoderick. I suppose this is a good, like, uh... both coming now though. Okay, good. I thought this was a good area to fight. Over here. Oh boy. Oh yeah, all these guys are here. See if we can fight this guy alone. Oh, I hate the delay in this game. Like the queue that keeps queuing. Oh boy. Well, we're just gonna say that this is a uh, Hodrick one. Oh, I had no stamina. Come on, stop that. So don't do that. Oh. He did it once, so I felt confident. Oh. doing here oh come on oh did I run out of stamina what the heck shield out so and this is the time to spam him. Get out of here. Wow. PvP in uh, Dark Souls 3. How did I get three Estes? That's weird. Alright, and I get a vertebra shackle. A special bone collected by members of the Covenant of Mound Makers discovered in the corpses of their victims. 
Only one such bone is found in the vertebra, and the mound makers believe it to be a shackle of the gods. In their minds, each victim is another connection, in addition to the family. Okay, so since we're getting close to the end here, I'm actually going to do save this next section for um, the next video. However, there's an item here which will... So this guy has an area for a cage, but he doesn't have a cage. So all these crows. This isn't the easiest area to navigate, but... Um, we will try our best. We just need to get some items up here. Cleric gear. And more importantly, under this tree, Mortician's Ashes. Uh, I think we'll save the rest for later. Oh, really? Oh, he gets me even out here. Okay. Let's just go back to Firelink. Huh. Oh, he, that was the same guy. I just didn't kill him. How do I get that? Okay. Something to strengthen my Estus. For sure. Not satisfied with my healing abilities. Okay. Rusted coin. Interesting. Old rusted copper coin. Crushing the coins. Be coined with item discovery. Uh, those who have lost their fortunes rely upon the superstitious practice, hoping to retrieve what was once theirs. That's really <laughs> that's an interesting description. Uh, and I guess I could, I could show that this right here is locked. Or it does not open from the side. Alright, so let us go to Firelink and then we can um, read everything and call it an episode. All right, so let's see if we got anything new here. Oh yeah, we got all this stuff to do. Oh yeah, sharp gem. Forged the unique curved swords of Karthus. Okay, that's our first hearing about Karthus in any game. A swordsman can appreciate a sharp weapon for they scale effectively with dexterity. And Mortician's Ashes, umbral ash of a resident of the undead settlement, who made a living burying corpses. With this, the Shrine Maiden made can will prepare new items. And it's a hand that has some sort of cloth or something in it, maybe? Uh, we have the Reinforced Club, a club made more deadly by the attachment of nails. The nails allow the strike weapon to be lacerating, but the damage caused by their insertion has reduced its durability. War cry, similar to we've read that before. Uh, 
So yeah, we have the blue wooden shield, a wooden shield painted bright blue, the symbol of clerics who have become undead, close to a small shield in size. And it's parry. Then we have the cleric hat, worn by a cleric turned undead, a typical attire for blue robe travelers. It is said that they were entrusted with a duty, still its nature is yet revealed. Garb worn by a cleric turned undead, unmistakable vibrant blue robes. It is said that the blue robe travelers were entrusted with duty. They bore large covers on their backs to ensure they would not become seed beds for spreading darkness. It's a very interesting um, line, and I will show you why it's interesting. Uh, more interesting than just it being unique. But they wore lar bore large covers on their backs to ensure that they would not become seed beds for spreading darkness. Gloves worn by a cleric turned undead. It is said that they were interested with the duty. Oops. Okay. Okay, that's it. So this is why it's interesting. Does that look familiar? Sorry, my cats are fighting. Oh, he's back. <laughs> Maybe to something like this. That's just my uh, my impression here. Okay, so we have so much stuff to do here. Ooh, yet to give in, eh? Good. The firekeeper must be twitching with delight. Interesting. What do you really know about these lords of Cinder? These supposed legends? Let's take Aldrich for one. A right and proper cleric. Only he developed a habit of devouring men. Hmm. He ate so many that he bloated like a drowned pig then softened into sludge. So they stuck him in the Cathedral of the Deep, and they made him a Lord of Cinder, not for virtue, but for might. Such as a Lord, I suppose. But here I ask, do we have a sodding chance? couple of great things about that first of all he says oh you see you survived like the first trials or whatever he went somewhere I don't know where but he left and came back and then he says the fire must firekeeper must be twitching with excitement and again like I think that each firekeeper is created for us in this world and that she's like lucky that if she's excited because I'm actually you know I haven't given up I haven't died I whatever so that like she can live longer essentially I mean I think that's a huge thing next he talks about Aldrich and the Cathedral of the Deep um, so Aldrich is linked with the Cathedral um, there's Aldrich's throne over there and it, he had a habit of devouring men until he bloated up like a pig. Now the intro semantic we saw him, he was like, he wasn't even a thing. He, I mean, he was the blob. I mean, he was spilling over black sludge everywhere that he, you know, was moving. And um, then they said they stuck him in the Cathedral of the Deep and made him a Lord of Cinder, which I think is very interesting because they are not talking about you know, not for virtue, but for might, you know, like, A, no one respected him, two, th he didn't make a choice himself to become a, a Lord of Cinder. Keep in mind, being a Lord of Cinder means you're burned alive. <laughs> Your soul is burned. So they made him a Lord of Cinder. They burned him. They set him ablaze so that they, who's they, by the way, right? I mean, we've seen the evangelists, who are also quite big, I might add. Um, but, uh, you know, like, 
they did it for their own power. Very interesting. Aldrich is very interesting. I think Aldrich is kind of like, you know, the core game here. Like, the whole story revolves around what Aldrich is doing. So I think it's very appropriate that, you know, we talk about him first. Let's talk again. If it's the same thing, I want to listen to it again so we can just catch everything. At the foot of Lothric Castle, an old path still runs below the tower in the undead settlement. Yes. It was used to transport sacrifices to the Cathedral of the Deep. You should see where it leads. If you've the stones for it. Probably to the Cathedral of the Deep, huh? <laughs> so there we go. So that's our answer to that. There were people coming to the Undead Settlement to take people to the Cathedral of the Deep. And I would posit to feed Aldrich. And as we'll probably see later, they probably made it a prospect that was interesting to some. Like, sacrifice yourself to our Lord and be eaten by him. So Undead Settlement is one of many where people are basically getting rounded up to be fed to Aldrich. So we definitely want to go to the Cathedral Deep and we definitely want to find Aldrich because uh, he's interesting. By the way, Smo, Smo was a cannibal as well, in a sense. He ground up his victim's bones and put them in his food. And that's what prevented him from becoming a, a knight of Gwyn. Um, uh, but they said Aldrich was a pro right and proper cleric. So in other words, um, in fact, I think he's a bishop. Um, and I don't think that was, there's been some people that have, you know, their stories are similar and they wonder if there's a uh, connection, but uh, I don't think there is. At the foot of okay, so unfortunately you only get that great description of Aldrich once. <sighs> anyway. Um, so there we go. Let's see if uh, Lilith has anything to say. Fret not, fret no. For. Listen, this might pique thy interest. Okay. Before I was a lord of cinder, I was a student of transposition. Hmm. The process of extracting and coalescing the essence of a soul. A forbidden art that once left a foul stain upon Corlin's honor. Tis an art that grants powers once thought unattainable. Most transposing kilns were lost with Corland, but this place is a crossing for all manner of cursed objects. If thou happenst upon a transposing kiln, bring it to me, quick. <laughs> I mean, they all were in Corland. Uh, it was what made Corland, or like it was like, a thing like that was a blight on Corland. Oh, if I just happen to find one. Okay. Listen. Before I was a lord of the process of extra Yeah, so oh yeah, foul stain upon Corland's honor. So if you just find one. Treat the fire keeper. Yeah, yeah. Um so yeah, I mean um so basically he's the person that can make boss souls and two weapons. Is all that means. All right. Oh, our champion of Ash, welcome home. This pilgrim, with a debt in death, hardly deserves to behold this divine flame. And I never would have. Had you not taken me into your service, I thank you dearly for this and assure you of my leal service. Hmm. He sounds almost sinister when he says that. So Yol of Londor can draw true strength. We can purchase an item from him. 
We can talk to him. As I have said, I was once a sorcerer. Alas, the magic of Londor is a far cry from the one of Vinheim. Ooh. But I can teach you what I know. Perhaps more importantly, I believe that I can help tease out your true strength. We pilgrims of Londor are keenly aware that those branded by the dark sign possess something quite special. And then back in. <laughs> we know that the ones at the dark sign are special. Come on, come over. Okay. As I have said, alas, the magic of Londor is Okay, so he just knows about Benheim. I thought he was saying he was from Benheim or something. He just he's referring to Benheim. So similar to Ulasil and um, the, you know and Binheim and you know I guess Melfia and stuff. Um, you know he, the sorceries from Londor are a bit different, and I guess we can find out how different they are. They look the same to me. Um, the power of the sorcerer swordsman of Vinheim is predicated upon this and magic shield. Many warriors learn sorcery just for this enchantment. Yeah. So, yeah. Huh. Interesting. Um, we're going to be doing this. <laughs> um, we're going to draw out our two strength. Uh, because this is the ending I want to do. Again, if you don't know all the details or whatever, don't worry. Uh, we'll definitely talk about it as things go. But we're going to basically get some free levels from him for a while. Then shall we begin? Bearer of the dark sign, let your true strength shine. Thank you, Lol. Yo. As I have said, a lot okay. of weep at them. Be safe, champion of ash. Alright, whatever that means. Man, this is getting long, but we gotta do all this stuff. Oh, hello, you're back. And in one piece. We have to give him Loretta's bone. To indicate to him that Loretta is dead. Heavens, she was already dead. Yep. Thank you. I'm not surprised though. Almost a relief, really. All right. You can keep the ring. As well, a little trinket of thanks, I suppose. You can keep the bug. Goodbye. Uh, oh, this place. <laughs> hmm. Something just fell. I don't know what it was. Ah, it's good to see you in good health. What needs me? Okay. Be careful. I don't want to see my work squandered. Okay, and we have one more thing to do. I guess level up. Ah, oh, how gracious. Passing fine ash thou hast given. Let this ash be stone nourishment. I only hope these new wares content thee. <laughs> Okay, so we have more embers, um, charcoal pine resin, charcoal pine bundle, human pine resin, charcoal pine resin rotted with human body fluids, temporary applies dark, so against dark and humanity are, are the same. Normally used in the undead settlement for preservation and burials, uh, but can mature into the state, becoming a valuable substance, used in a certain ceremony, often seen for trade at exorbitant prices. He had his. 
And now we have a grave key. Key to the barred door leading from the sewer below the undead settlement to a moist grave. The grave which no longer receives visitors was once the site of the statue of Elka, goddess of sin, and was believed to pardon wrongdoing and lift curses. I'm very interested in that. Crimson Parma, yeah, we read that. Okay. Ashen one, break it. Yeah. <laughs> Ashen one. Oh. oh, and we have so many souls to upgrade with. I'm obviously not going to use the boss souls, although I think we can read them anyway. But I don't want to chance it at this point. Welcome, Hubspeak. Ashen One. Oh, yeah, so she doesn't say much of anything either. Hopefully, we can get two from this. Nope. We're close, though. Ashen One. Okay. Well, that's all. <laughs> that's going to be it for this episode. I did not anticipate going that far over, but uh, there was just plenty to do here, and we needed to do it. So, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll continue with the Undead Settlement in the next episode. Bye!